All right, so what I did is I took my drawing here and I measured out the limbs. So if this limb needed to be this long, I measured it out like that and I cut it that length. So the rod was about four feet long when I got it. I clamped it in my vise like this. Took my saw and I cut it like so. All right, now, depending on what tools you have available to you, you might have something that could cut the rod straight. Um, I don't, so I had to use this din dingy, <laughs> bent ass uh, saw. Uh, I, what I originally tried to do is saw uh, filing the edge so I could thread it through the uh, ball bearings, but that wasn't working. Luckily, I do have this, which is a tap and die set. Now, I don't expect everyone to have one of these, but if you don't, hopefully you have something that you could use to cut this threaded rod, <clears throat> threaded rod. Now, if you do have one or you know someone that has one and you've never used it before, basically what you wanna do is, this is an 832nd threaded rod, okay? So, once you mess up the end of it, what you have to do is you have to re-thread it, okay? And you can change the circumference uh, or diameter, whatever, and this comes out, you put in uh, the right size, and you basically fit it onto the top, and you slowly fit this on top like that, and you just re-thread the top of it. What it does is it kind of... <laughs> It trims it trims a little bit off the top you know you don't have to go all the way down because you're only going you know maybe a tenth of an inch a little bit in so like already I've gone too far but I just want to show you that you can go pretty far into it okay so that's good enough and this is why the vice is, is your best friend with this project, because you definitely need to hold some of this, and you'll see we're going to use it for more things. Uh, if you don't have a vice, you might have to mock up or jerry-rig something to use. Um, but now you can see uh, at the end of that is pretty spot on. So I'm going to get my ball bearings. And I'm basically going to fit that right onto the end. So the thing with the ball bearings is if they don't fit, you have two options. You could basically change the tap set to a smaller size and you could just slowly just shave that off until it fits or you might have just got the wrong size ball bearing because even though I bought these supposedly the right size in the hardware store, I realized there was a couple that just for some reason or another didn't fit. So that's nice and tight now. Now you need to keep one thing in mind though, this is going to be for an armature. Uh, and its purpose, basically, is to be moved. So, the ball bearings are going to loosen up because you're not only going to be moving it into the tightened position, you're also going to be moving it into the loosened position. So what I do, as soon as I screw these ball bearing caps on, is I usually solder them so they're nice and tight. When I made the armature the first time, what I did was 
I soldered them on after I had already put the compression plates on, which was a mistake. Because then the solder got in the way of the compression plates. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to solder the ball bearings on straight away. So that's on there. Alright. And now this should fit. Remember what I said about these compression plates, one side is a little bit indented, alright, and that's the side that we want to have the balls on. Now, these are really tight, you know, but if you move it in the opposite direction, it might loosen, so I think it's highly advisable to put some solder on there. Now, it's basically going to fit in there like this. Now you want to make sure the holes line up. So you want to take the two sides that were machine cut, the flat sides, you want to line them up with the holes because those are the sides that are, that are going to line up best like that and then the other holes should line up as well this is why you want them to be basically the same size they don't have to be perfect like you don't have to cut them exactly the same length but if you cut them completely off then you're going to have to recut them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder them. Now, you might not have a solder kit. I'm not saying it's 100% necessary, but if you don't have a solder kit, maybe you want to get some Loctite or some epoxy, E6000, some type of like heavy-duty glue. Um, sometimes that stuff takes 24 hours to dry, which would make the project take longer. I'm going to use solder because it pretty much dries instantly. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to take you over to that. And we'll uh, work on that next time.